Welcome everybody to the Enterprise Architect 16 webinar series. My name's Scott Hebbard from Spark Systems and tonight or to, uh, today I am joined uh, by Nithya who is going to present the webinar on systems engineering in Enterprise Architect 16 and we're very very uh, pleased to have recently released Enterprise Architect 16 at Spark Systems and we encourage everybody to download a trial and have a look if they have not done so already. Thank you, welcome everyone. I can see more people are joining, that's exciting. It's really uh, nice to be back doing webinars and uh, you know, it's good to showcase Enterprise Architect 16. Um, today, it will be an introductory session for systems engineering in Enterprise Architect 16. Hope everyone can hear me clearly. Scott? Sure can. It's uh, oh. coming through loud and clear and sounds fantastic. Lovely. Fantastic. So, um, thanks everyone and I appreciate you spending, uh, giving your time. So let's jump into the uh, webinar. Uh, the learning points for today is uh, to see the benefits of EA, when I say it's enterprise architect for model-based systems engineering and how to capture high quality system requirements and thereby establish traceability and drive downstream deliverables from the requirements. And finally, I will in showcase some um, tools which are in enterprise architect user interface, very beneficial for system engineers. And then finally, I will touch upon the verification and validation of requirements through simulation features in EA. So as we all know, with the enabling technologies of Industry 4.0, the, um, complex, the complexity of systems are getting more and more, are increasing, actually increasing more like never before. And everything is connected. So we have like connected systems everywhere, connected cars, even connected cows and like whatnot. So it is very important to manage this complexity. And one of the ways people or industries use um, to manage the complexity is to follow the model-based systems engineering approach. So why model-based design engineering or system engineering is firstly, we capture all the artifacts from the requirements to all the deliverables, downstream deliverables up to, you know, the interface or the components and whatnot, all the documents, everything inside a repository. So what happens? This repository is always maintained up to date. So that becomes a single source of truth. So every single user accessing the model will have the latest or up-to-date, accurate information. No one is working on an outdated information. And it, because all the information is in the model, it is easy to maintain or manage the traceability between the elements, the relationship between the elements. In AI, you can have dynamic traceability views. So what I mean by dynamic traceability, we will see, see that soon. Um, so once the traceability is established between all the requirements and the components, you can do an efficient impact analysis. And especially with a tool that enables you to uh, see a bird's eye view of, a, of the entire system and bee's eye view of the system of each and every component in that particular system, it is very efficient to do impact analysis and also risk analysis. Uh, finally, the most important thing is when you use a model based approach, especially in EA, I can say that it brings people and processes needed for the system design engineering together. So the modeling is, is just not a simple entity. People are accessing it. We're all working remotely in the current world. So we need to communicate, we need to collaborate. It has to be efficient. So the processes and people are tied together in a digital environment. So we need an environment where you can have real-time collaboration. So this is very much um, the need of the day and EA enables you to do that. All right, first let's see about the requirements. So first thing is capturing the requirements. So why in a model? Because very simple, we have known that we, we don't have to create the same requirement twice. 
it's understood that if it goes into the model, it's a single source of truth, everyone accesses the same uh, system and have the um, latest up-to-date version of the requirement. But consider this, you have created a requirement for a project, say, like five years before, and it's in a model. And now you need to access the com a particular component, which was already used in a, in a different system. You want to access the same system, or you want to know what you want to study and analyze the requirement. You don't go and create everything from the scratch. You don't reinvent the wheel. It is all saved in a repository and it's available there. So you build up a library of requirements as you elicit the requirements and uh, you know analyze the requirements. So that's very important, and that only a model-based approach allows you to have that uh, that kind of a benefit. So you have to reuse the requirements easily. Uh, the traditional approach of you know uh, eliciting requirements, you can use a people generally use a whiteboard. I've seen that in many workplaces. That there's nothing wrong, but you know at the end of the day, the whiteboard has to be cleaned, or end of the week, or end of the sprint, the whiteboard will be cleaned, and if you to refer to that again it's it's not possible it's 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 gone it's temporary um the other ways are to use sticky notes um and finally once everyone agrees the sticky notes goes into uh, an excel document again this is not as productive you know as it feels and um, there can be human errors and Everything needs to be retyped. That means there's more work. And it's, again, a temporary thing. Uh, your Excel can be corrupted. So how do you, and most of all, maintaining the traceability becomes very complex. There will be so many Excel sheets, and there will be another sheet, which uh, manages the complex, which manages the traceability and what kind of relationship, and filtering, and searching, doing an impact analysis. It all becomes very complex with the traditional approach. So that these are all the important reasons why model-based tools like Enterprise Architect is very, very essential for a successful systems engineering project. So now you can ask me, like, what, okay, what's a good plan is to, as I said, capture the requirements in the model repository. So this is a sample screenshot from AA. So these are some uh, safety requirements, non-functional requirements captured in the model. And as you can see, th this view is basically, uh, it looks like an Excel sheet, right? So it's easier for non-technical users who are not used to modeling environment to just like that see, uh, okay, this this, this uh, requirement and this is the status, this is the priority, it's all in one, you know, one, it's like a dashboard, you can just see it in one single screen. And uh, you can see the properties, you can see the summary, and you can create tag values, etc. So when you create a requirement in a model, it is not a static entity, it gets slight. You give the properties for you set the properties for these requirements, you can add more properties which are not there, like in tag values, additional requirement, additional properties you wish to add for the requirement can be add, added as a tag value. And there are a lot of other things as well, like you can, if you want to attach a document that is relevant to a requirement, say for example, a stakeholder has given you a policy document and you have created a requirement adhering to that policy document, that document can also be linked to this requirement in a model. Whereas if you go for an Excel sheet, you know the trouble, you can attach it to an Excel cell, but it is not as e easy to maintain and as easy to access and, and also version control them. The governance also becomes quite complicated in the traditional approach. So it eliminates all those issues. Um, okay, going ahead, um, capturing high quality requirements, as I said, you have the properties, tag values and constraints, uh, even the user acceptance criteria, and yes, I forgot to mention about the collaboration, didn't I, earlier, so discussions, you take a requirement, and if you want to discuss with your team members or the stakeholders, all the discussions can also be captured inside EA. So 
the discussions are not going to vanish or it's not going to be in an email buried uh, in you know um, so whenever you click on or you select a particular requirement that becomes the context what happens is or everything around that requirement you can view it in a matter of clicks so yes we have discussed about this requirement this how uh, the the stakeholder has asked for this particular uh, requirement for the, so such and such reasons these are the difficulties he has faced everything can be captured in the requirements all the format reviews and the feedback everything happens in the model so it is it gives a very clear foundation for a very good collaboration and everything that happens in real time it's not like sending a mail, waiting for two days, and then getting a reply. No, you just send the uh, uh, discussion, and then it's just like a chat, you know, like a social media thing. So it's very easy to do all these discussions and uh, gets the attention of the stakeholder easily. The second thing I like, basically, um, in the requirements management toolbar is the checklist. You know, it is very easy. It makes the user um uh, to create a requirement that is smart you know that adheres to all these properties using a checklist so with the checklist you can say okay is this requirement atomic can i uh, make this uh, is an, an ambiguous one can i verify this is it verifiable everything can be um you know it just kind of um takes your brain saying oh here's the checklist i'll keep this and then I, everything has to be checked in order to make sure my requirement is complete as you know requirements bad requirements or like problems with the requirements are the single biggest issue in paid projects you know? uh, not just in systems engineering projects any project so the requirement has to be very clear Unambiguous and correct and accurate and adequate to uh, the uh, you know needs business needs. So this checklist can be used for governance as a governance as well. So you can create a policy or a practice in your organization saying like every requirement has an attached checklist and minimum these kind attributes. Say for example, it has to be current, it has to be atomic, it has to be unambiguous, traceable and verifiable, uh, modifiable. You can select whatever are necessary for your organization for that particular project. And this must check with this or uh, the properties must be checked in order for the requirement to move on to the next level. Okay, so this is very useful. So these are some of the tools that helps you to create um, a practice where the, you have high quality requirements for your project. So now you have all the requirements and uh, what does AI offer you after that? So when you have the requirements, you can basically generate downstream deliverables. When I say generate, I just mean like, you know, with few clicks of your mouse, you can generate, for example, say, create a use case diagram, and the use case diagram has some scenarios. You type in the scenarios, and with a couple of clicks, you can create an activity model. You can create a state model, okay? So once you create activity model and a state model, you can attach decision tables to these particular, say for example, one activity or one state. And once you have the decision table, you can literally simulate the decision models for and test whether it is, um, you know, the requirements are validated. Can you, uh, is it working as we expect it to work? Is it right? So this can be done. So it's not like hard work. You don't have to spend days to create models, get it verified, and then move on to the next model. Just click, you get it. And uh, this is a um, very interesting and very useful feature in EA. And uh, moreover, with all these um, you know, simulation features available, for example, say decision modeling features, etc., you can also create test cases attached to these requirements. And uh, the test cases can also be managed from within, EA. for example, here. You can see there's a use case and there's a test case attached to it. 
the test case will have different kind of you know uh, this is the system test is it the you know unit test is it the user acceptance criteria and you can even attach user interface prototypes in, uh, for this particular requirement and verify that all within the model you don't have you don't need any other different uh, tool you know, it, it is all there it's like a one shop one stop shop um, finally, um, I would also like to mention um, again, modern based design engineering or software engineer, system engineering is in trend now. And here, click Agile, MBSC, Agile, MBSC, everything. So, I would also like to mention EA allows you to capture um, every information right from the ideation phase. You have like your brainstorming tools like strategy maps and uh, whatnot, you know, mind maps, etc. And then you can have the Kanban links um, for your sprints, for every iteration. And uh, yes, yeah, so and it's uh, very much uh, aligned to AMB's Agile and BSC approach. Well, are there any questions so far? Screen is uh, Thanks, Vithya. Um, I'm mm -hmm. just having a look now, um, and there's a few um, few questions. Um, and one of the questions is, um, you know, what are some of the um, changes that have been implemented with respect to requirements? So, what are some of the things that you can do with requirements? In Enterprise Architect 16, that you might not have been able to do in previous versions. That's an interesting question. There's a whole lot of um, you know um, improvements that are um, related to managing uh, the requirements in a different way or visualizing the requirements. One of the things that I really like is Scriptlex. The webinar is coming up in the next week. Um, in the following week, so you should uh, keep an eye on it to see how it actually helps you to visualize requirements. You can literally make a EA diagram more live, more um, you know animated, like based on the based on certain rules which you can code using the scriptlets. The scriptlets are tiny snippets of uh, you know JavaScript code where. Um, you can use the pre-built or uh, already existing functions to, uh, uh, you know, manipulate the, uh, or I shouldn't say manipulate, to make sure to um, give life to the uh, diagram elements. For example, say, uh, I want to see all the element, all the requirements in this diagram, which has high risk attached to it. You can literally code the script. And make sure uh, the diagram when you present to your stakeholders, it'll all be like you know highlighted in red. Um, apart from the regular one saying like you know the color codes for the status, there's more. Or you can have different lanes which will automatically organize itself every time you open the diagram based on its status or based on the risk attached to it or based on you know which phase, um, how much progress it has. Um, gone through in the, uh, in the in the current sprint etc so scriptlets are the one important thing that comes to my mind with respect to you know requirements management we have been using that a lot it's very yeah interesting and a few yes, other things like um you know there's now um enhanced journals and reviews and discussions so you can now have a detailed discussion with members of your team so improved collaboration tools there's improved auditing, which is often important for some of our corporate customers when they're looking at requirements, um, finer control over user permissions, and uh, many, many other things. And uh, thanks for the uh, bit of a promo for the webinar next week on scriptlets that I'll be uh, conducting. Yes. So, <laughs> thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll Absolutely. let you get back to it, and uh, we'll mm -hmm. come back to some more questions at the end of the session. Thanks, Nikki. Nice. Um, okay, moving on. So we have the requirements. As I said, there are different ways you can establish traceability. It's not just one like in like you do in Excel. You have columns, and this element is connected to this element, and this is the relationship. It's not like that. But you can have uh, the traceability diagrams into. Um, it's, it's more visual, the diagrams are more visual. Say for example, the screenshot uh, you say now it has the use cases and uh, it is 
uh, the, it has a trace relationship between the requirements. Say, for example, check battery levels. You know, robot should not do that. Should not. I'm sorry. It should be go. Should go to the charging dock when battery levels are low. Robot does not start the tool when battery levels are low. Etc. So, you see any problem with the requirement here? Anyone? Okay, I'll say I wouldn't actually mention anything like this. This requirement is kind of ambiguous. What is low? Low for me is different from low for someone else or low for in a different system. So it has to be specific. For example, robot does not start the tool when the battery levels are 25% and below, something like that. Okay. So these things are where the checklist helps you. If you have a governance control, having the checklist, you can identify that and you can fix it. Otherwise, sometimes it's overlooked and uh, you know the requirements are not up to uh, good quality levels and it creates um, inaccurate systems. So next, uh, uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So the next thing is uh, relationship metrics, where you can um, basically see the matrix um, um, style, uh, the source and target can be set here. For example, the source uh, requirements and the targets are use cases, and you can uh, set the relationship type. You know, here I have mentioned it as trace and. Uh, Yes, uh, as you can see, the relationships, if you want to create a relationship, just right click on a particular cell and create one. You can even remove it and you can save the profile as it's, save this matrix as a profile. So you don't have to do it every time. So once a profile is set, you can uh, create as an entity and, and even drag and drop uh, on a particular diagram. And then every time you click on an entity, the matrix entity just opens up. So you can create various relationship matrix matrices for different uh, you know uh, sources and target types and uh, different link types etc um, this helps in managing the complexity as well um, yes the, the other uh, ways uh, to uh, see the traceability uh, is to actually open the traceability window and there's something called as an inspector window. This was a, um, available even in EA15. Um, EA16 has a little bit more, um, you know, it's been tweaked a bit and added uh, summary and status tabs, if, as you can see. So this is another uh, additional feature in EA16. So in traceability window, you can see you click on uh, any, uh, for example, the requirement here, remote control emergency stop by observer can be applied. So a collision with visitors or exhibits will not occur. So this is actually related to shutdown robot use case and how it is related. And you can drill down the relationship to the lowest level and drill up to the highest level as well, whichever level you want. So it gives you a very good view. And then the inspector window, actually what it does is you select just one requirement and everything that is re related to the requirement or any EA element, okay? Well, you can actually see a bizarre view of that particular element. For example, what relationships exist? Are there any discussions in this element? As you can see, there's a discussion. Is the requirement validated? Maybe your manager has asked that and there's a discussion and this is captured. If you have answered yes, it is there. No one can say the discussion didn't happen at all. So it is all there. And then are there any scenarios, constraints, and any unique features? For example, as a, a file that is uh, um, you know, related to the particular requirement, it can be attached. Are there any issues? How many? Oh, here yeah, there are no testing, there are no test cases, so that's an issue. So you can raise that. So there are no test cases available for this particular requirement. So we need to build test cases. Are there any project risks? Are there any source resources allocated for this um, particular requirement development? So all these just in one simple window, you can analyze everything. So it's like a dashboard for you. No need to send emails and question other people about what is happening, etc. So it's all there. Uh, 
in the in the inspector window there's again the trace view which helps you so if you have the inspector window you can use this as well and then the summary will give you um you know if, it, if you, it's um if you have an external tool integrated with ea for example the requirements comes from jira uh, are there any notes from jira so that will be in the summary any external notes will be evaluated in the summary and the other any status what's the status of this particular uh, requirement of the entity for example here the use case guide visitors whether it's in proposed state etc approved state you can see that easily in just this window so these are different ways where you can uh, establish and manage traceability the next way is for the uh, tools that allow um, systems engineers to easily get started and uh, you know work uh, through their project in EA. So the first important thing I will uh, say is the model patterns. EA has more than hundreds of model patterns, I should say, which are readily available out of the box. You just click on the project and then the template and then you create, click on create button, you get the entire model. For example, here, it's so a 1.5 project structures and there is some basic MBAC project structure project structure here you can see this this will be the structure so once you select this and then click on create model the repo in the repository this but this template will be created so all you have to do is click click into each of this package and then start developing your uh, you know uh, your model like for example use cases or parametrics just architecture, it's, it, the basics are there, the diagram types are available, the toolbox will be really available. You can just like that start building, I don't have to go and search for, oh, what am I going to do? I have to create a basic project. Where do I start? Now, if you're a newbie, it's very, very useful. So as you can see, there are a lot of model um, patterns, like for Modalica case studies are there, there's uh, UAF views and DODAP views, etc. So that's one. Let's move on to the next. Uh, the next tool, very important tool. I hope people use it, but I've seen not. Uh, I've seen some people struggling with the, you know, uh, to find things in the EA toolbar because very rich. So this is a feature which allows you to easily uh, find uh, the tools that you are looking for. For example, set the if you're a systems engineer, set the perspective to systems engineer. This is a portals window. And then in the drop down, select perspectives, and you can see that these are all different perspectives in AA. You can filter it. For example, I want all systems engineering perspective. I click on systems engineering and all systems engineering. If I'm working only on SysML, then I click SysML. And everything that is related to SysML, for example, the toolbox, the uh, toolbars, the uh, um, output window, simulation window, everything related to SysML just your workspace is basically set so that you can start modeling system, working in system mode. So that's how it is. So you don't have to go and search for, uh, for the tools and you know where it is in EA, etc. Um, also, the portals also has the another uh, you know uh, another section which is execute section that will be useful for systems engineers. If you have created a state machine model, for example, and you want to try and uh, you know simulate it, what you do is just go here and then you know just click on the execute and you get the start simulation, the simulation. Uh, uh, you could click on this and the, all the windows related to simulation appears. Um, if you want uh, BP sim, then click on this, system and sim, click on this. So it's just there. All you need to do is go to the portals, perspectives. Um, uh, and then if you want to execute, just go to the execute, and there are also windows. So you just click on the particular section from this drop down menu, and then, uh, then the menu will give you uh, the available like perspectives, workspaces, windows, and execute. Just click on it and straight away go to the create the workspace that you want. Um, yes, again, like it's execute portal. This one we have already discussed. Let's say the toolbar. In the toolbar, there's a simulate section which gives you all available 
uh, you know, um, tools for systems engineers for, for simulation say. For example, the uh, executable states, if you want to do decision analysis, then there's DMN. And if you want to do process analysis, there's BBSIM. And if you have integrated with Sunlink or Modelica, then you have the system behavior simulation. So if you want to do math, like math solvers are also available for more advanced simulation and charting. So this is all the UI uh, uh, aspects of a systems engineering in EA. So this will help you to set up your workspace easily and start developing a modeling in EA. So this is important to know. So here you can see the workspace. There are a lot of workspaces. So there's a simulation workspace, there's a DMN workspace, and the way where you can just go, or you can even create your own workspace. You can, um, you know, in EA just um, open all the windows where you want, how you want to be positioned, and then say there's a workspace, say it's my workspace, and then it will be saved in my workspace. This is also easy um, and a very useful feature. So now we come to the uh, simulation aspect. As I said, I'm not going to demonstrate this in this webinar. In future webinars, we will see one by one in detail, like how to do state machine simulation, how to uh, executable state machines, I mean, and then how to use other uh, you know, simulation techniques in EA. So this is an example of executable state machines for traffic lights as, um, you know, these are the states. And uh, as you can see, um, there's the setup is in context and then the behavior is there. And uh, there's this little um, operation window where you can see like these are the test values, how many, what you want and what, what are you expecting? And then you execute and see whether the model passes or fails. And here is the, um, uh, again, another advanced simulation uh, for, uh, you know, flight control, like flights have gone to different parts and of the country here in Australia. And uh, yeah, there are, there's a more, like, the feature is like, you can basically uh, code charting dynamic charts for example based on the schedule and based on the number of visitors and kilometers etc so you can even create these charts and create a dashboard out of it so this one is for dynamic uh so, sorry decision models so as i said when you have um uh, for example say uh, a state diagram or an activity diagram or you create your own decision model uh, using the DMN profile, each and every um, entity here can be attached. For each and every entity, you can attach a decision table. And then using the decision table, you create the rules or you define the rules with these, um, you know, the columns and rows. And then the values, you can input the values for the simulation. For example, what value it is here, it says less than 120, then you check giving 100 or giving something greater than 100 like 130 or even 1000 and let's see if the uh, process that you have created actually works the model that you have created the prototype you have created uh, the software prototype i mean ha actually works not. okay so um, coming to the uh, you know uh End of it. We have touched upon the topics like uh, what are the benefits and how to capture high quality requirements and uh, using traceability, how to manage the complexity, and uh, you know, uh, there are different UI tools that, that, that are uh, useful for systems engineers and the simulation aspects. Now, I would like to emphasize that uh, in EA. The important thing is you're capturing everything in a controlled environment with the governance process. You have to establish the governance process. Just modeling is not going to help. You should have a governance process. You should follow a best practice that is suitable for your organization. He supports agile practice, as I said. You can follow agile MBSC. You can capture all the information from the ideation phase, from the brainstorming phase. 
um, within clicks, you can create downstream deliverables. It allows real-time collaboration. And more importantly, enabling document generation. Documents are more, generating documents are the more time consuming as part of, uh, you know, any analyst or any, uh, you know, any, any uh, software engineer because it's important for things to be documented for future reference. When, with an EA, it's very easy because um, there are, um, the custom documents, which is a very useful thing, is like a drag and drop uh, feature, allows you to create a document. Create a custom document and drag and drop the entities from the project browser and, and select the appropriate, um, uh, you know, items you want the documentation. Like, for example, I want the properties, I want the notes, etc. It all generates by itself. So it's super easy to create. Um, documentation and it you can also customize it for your organization etc um, and uh, what more you have to make sure the stakeholders um, are making informed decisions and uh, the uh, you know projects are going to successfully so verification validation is very important that's where formal reviews come into place and uh, the test benches and uh, you know uh, simulation uh, of the models, everything helps to create an informed decision. Um, the other side is the project management. So you need to know what resources are allocated or the project manager should know like what resources are allocated, how long they have been working for and uh, you know how the, the timeline etc. So everything can happen within EA. You don't have, you don't need to have a different, uh, a, a different tool like MS uh, project or something to manage the project. Everything from within EA you can manage the project. So you don't need a separate tool. That's what I like, uh, like to emphasize on. That makes it even simpler to have uh, to do a thorough impact analysis. Say, for example, there is a risk of uh, this requirement not being met just because the resource is not available. Uh, it's going to take a long leave in, in the next month, the following month or something. That can also be analyzed. Whereas if you go for a different uh, you know, tool where it's only focused on um, you know, requirements and if any, anything that is technical and not the people side of it is not managed, then it becomes hard for you to assess the risk related to people, assess the issues and concerns related to people side of it. Okay, so that's when, where I say um, the process, people, everyone, it, it's all tied together. EA helps to manage everything together. So, uh, yes, you can visualize the elements at different levels of granularity, impact analysis. Uh, you can just literally, within with a click of a button, you can create a big uh, impact diagram. You know, put an element whatever element you want to assess impact for and right click in EA and go uh, create all related elements. It will, the diagram will automatically generate all the related elements. You can even filter down to what kind of relationship uh, you want the element, uh, what kind of relationships you are looking for. For example, every um, dependent uh, element or every realized element, etc. So this is all very easy and things happen within clicks of uh, within a few mouse clicks. So it's super easy and efficient um, so that you can have projects move faster and uh, it fits in the ecosystem of your existing applications. Yes, if you have Jira or if you have Confluence, etc. Yes, you can integrate it with EU. So these are the benefits. And uh, yeah, finally, um, a model can be useful only when it's a stakeholders can understand there's no point just creating models, complex models that you think is awesome and you've done a good job, but then nobody can understand it and there's no point of doing the model. So that's where the collaboration comes into place. Often we get into, uh, uh, you know, um, your uh, own world and say like, ah, oh, created the most accurate, most detailed model. For example, when um, Scott was reviewing my presentation, you know, before one of the uh, slides was very wordy. I thought I've given all the information. I uh, even after the years of presentations, you know, I get caught in this trap. And he kind of highlighted, mentioned it to me. Hey, I think that 
uh, that particular slide is very worrying. So you need someone to review. You need, it's very important to have peer, peer review and all these things. So it helps, right? So the so the uh, real time collaboration features, the journals, the um, you know uh, discussions, etc. Helps in creating a better, understandable, more more comprehensible uh, models. And uh, you can use standard notations and languages. You can create your own specific taxonomy and velocity for your organization, your own, you know, uh, create a framework uh, that is specific to your organization, you can customize it. Um, you're creating a relationship between the models, as I said, model elements, but also the people involved in authoring and managing the model artifacts, right? Um, that's very important. Who can uh, read, who can, uh, who has what, you know, basically create a stakeholder uh, um, assessment, like, you know, what they call that, uh, the, the stakeholder management view where you can see, okay, these are the stakeholders involved. So these people have the influence over these particular artifacts. These, these people use it. These people have just the governance control, etc. So everything can be captured inside the model. Integration with other tools, as I said, etc. So this is where enterprise architect helps you to manage the complexity and uh, save you time by auto has automated most of the uh, work for you like creating um activity models use um, scenario diagrams use um, you know state models etc from your uh, use case diagrams so it's um very easy um uh, if you have anything to uh, uh, think that you want to know more about, please feel free to comment about it, that you want to see this feature in the future webinar. So this is an introductory webinar. So with this, I'm concluding this webinar. Uh, do you have any questions or comments? Thanks, Nithya. Um, there's a few uh, questions that have come up. Uh, you talked about uh, a history of elements um, and recording that. Can you talk about the ability to store a history of uh, discussions or decisions within Enterprise Architect and why that might be valuable, especially with absolutely. some of the new collaboration tools. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely, Scott. It's, it's um, yeah, as I said, everything is captured with timestamp and date stamp. I can, I I can show the EA model, show an EA model. Do you think we have time for that, Scott? Uh, absolutely, yes. Okay. Um, just perhaps while you're getting that ready, um, I might just say there's been a couple of people that have asked, is this going to be available? And so, yes, it will be made available on sparksystems.com under the webinar page, and we'll also make it available on the Spark Systems YouTube page so you can uh, view that uh, uh, video at uh, another time. Um, mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So we were talking about discussions. So I just go into yes. <laughs> my models. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's why you're bringing that up. Yeah. And uh, just a reminder that we have a, uh, a scriptlets webinar coming up as well. So you can go to sparksystems.com slash uh, webinars and uh, you can uh, sign up for the Scriptlets webinar being uh, held on the uh, 25th of May as well. Okay. Okay. So we're good. Yeah, I also say, someone saying, I expected a webinar on EA16 versus EA15 comparison. Ah, that's a great one. Like, um, I'm sorry that uh, you didn't find uh, what you wanted to. Uh, see, but um, yes, there, there are a lot of EA highlight videos which you can check check it uh, on our website and on our LinkedIn pages that will help you understand more and drill deeper into the EA16 features, and you'll have more webinars in future. So back to our question about the uh, uh, discussions. Like, say, for example, I opened a diagram and say for guide visitors uh, use case, I want to discuss something. So I'm going to click on the tool here, um, says discuss, and then say discuss and discussion history. There are no history as such because we haven't discussed anything. Uh, and just go here and then, oh, that is interesting, isn't it? So there you go. Um, 
Okay, recently discussed. We haven't recently discussed anything. So let's. How about we do? Uh, I'll post a reply to this. Yes, it is validated. Validated, and I say okay. I can go and uh, there's the uh, it goes refreshed, and then there is a discussion happened. So the, the you can review the history what what has happened today or in specific day, and then what reviews has happened in the journals that has been uh, added in a particular day, et cetera. So thereby it's not just like, you know, you create a discussion, you click there and then just say the current one. You can also see a history of uh, um, information like discussions and reviews that has happened over a particular element. Hope that answers your question and hope that is oh, yeah. helpful. That's great. Thanks, Nithya. Um, I think it's it's good to see that those discussions and review elements are all stored within the model, so they're not lost, like if they'll put on a whiteboard or a, um, a notepad, uh, they're stored in the model and they're stored with the repository and they can be stored on the diagram or the element level, which is um, really good for traceability as well. If in three years time you want to decide um, or you want to look at why a decision was made, then it's generally stored within the model, which is quite helpful. Um, uh, the next question I just have is, uh, are there uh, any improvements to uh, documentation and reporting in Enterprise Architect 16? Would you like to answer that, Scott? You next so in Enterprise Architect 16, um, there's some new enhancements with custom documents to improve that to make it easier to create your own custom documents. So um, in addition to having the traceability and the simulation tools, uh, you also have the ability to create uh, nice, concise, uh, simple reports as well. So uh, that's good. Maybe I can explain that. Uh, like for example, there's a diagram for documentation uh, and then what I can do is say publish, go to the publish toolbar and then create a custom document, say, uh, document and then click OK. What happens is a document is then created. At the moment, I'm not creating any template. I just leave it as, for example, I want to know about, um, yeah, uh, okay, this package. I want to create a documentation of requirements in this package and drag and draw. So let's just move. Just this. drag it and drop it onto the okay. left. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. So now what happens is, yes, and uh, now it shows me like what template you want. Do you want just a diagram report or data modeling report or audit report, etc. Have any changes been made or just a summary, etc. Let's say I will do details. And then I will say, okay. What I did was just a couple of clicks and drag and drop the custom document, selected the information and uh, or I selected the package for which I wanted the uh, document to be created. And there you go. Within a couple of clicks, you have the document ready. The more important thing is you can even create some static uh, information here. Like if you want to create your own you know, uh, header, footer, or some information in between, like you want to type in some information, it, you can all do it. And every time something changes with the respect to the in, you know, um, values of the uh, elements, it will be updated here. So you don't need to worry about updating the document every time or refreshing the document every time it changes. So I save it and close it and something changes here and uh, I didn't say. Yeah, but uh, I think the um, the important thing that Nithi has shown us there is that with just a few um, button clicks, I think, yeah. you can uh, you can instantly create a document, you can tailor it and customize it to your needs, and you can update the that document. Rating. Yes, um, mm -hmm. so <laughs> that's really good. Um, so what I might do is I might just uh, mm, yeah. take control yes. of the screen uh, I... now, mm -hmm. and I will um, just that's wrap something. things up. So uh, thanks for that. And uh, thanks for everyone. Thank you uh, very much, guys. Thanks for your time.
Uh, so this webinar will appear on YouTube and sparksystems.com. Uh, don't forget to have a look at um, the sparksystems.com slash MBSE uh, page if you want some more information. If you have any recommendations for some uh, Enterprise Architect uh, 16 webinars coming up, please just email webinar at sparksystems.com and um, uh, don't forget you can go uh, to the URL on screen or sparksystems.com slash webinars in order to register for future webinars and to um, uh, join us for the scriptlets webinar that's coming up. Uh, so I'd like to thank everyone for their attendance. Um, it's great to be able to um, see some of the uh, tools in uh, Enterprise Architect 16 and in a very short period of time we've looked at um, simulation and traceability and uh, custom documents and um, being able to uh, conduct simulations on state machines and on activity diagrams and generating downstream artifacts from uh, Enterprise Architect. So there's quite a lot uh, that's been covered so I'd like to uh, thank Mithia for um, providing such a concise uh, webinar that covers uh, so much depth and detail about what Enterprise Architect can do and we look forward to in the future doing a deep dive into some of those features uh, so people can uh, uh, learn more. Uh, so uh, look after one another, uh, take care, thank you very much for attending and uh, we'll see you at a future webinar. Uh, thanks Nithya. Thank you Scott, thank you all, it's been a pleasure.